Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to our, um, our webinar, Polycredus. Um, as you know, we used to do these uh, kind of webinars. Uh, we are already in the fourth uh, round. Um, and so um, we usually, uh, our activities run through these kind of uh, events. Um, which are good because they allow us to turn near or to bring near people that usually are a part are in other parts of the of the of the country or even of the world. Uh, as you know, Polycredo's main issue has to do with uh, religions and society, and also with gender questions. So today we are having uh, as a guest Edwin Medina, and now. Julia will present him. Welcome, Edwin. Welcome, everybody. So let's start. Okay, so I'm very happy to welcome here at Polycredes Edwin Rubio Medina. Edwin is a lawyer who defended the human rights of the victims of state crimes in Colombia between 2009 and 2013, and um, is a consultant of various indigenous peoples since 2014. Edwin has a master's in human rights and democratization from Externato University Car Carlos III of Madrid, and he has a PhD in human rights in contemporary societies from SESH uh, here in, at University of Coimbra. He's a full professor of the INI Sinu Monteria Law Program, and he's developing a postdoc at SESH. His academic production is focused on international law, decoloniality, indigenous law, history, and legal theory. Today, Edwin is presenting this webinar about the vestiges of Spanish colonialism, the techniques of sovereign massacres in Colombia. Edwin, thank you so much for accepting our invitation and sharing your research with us here at Polycredos. So please, Edwin, thank you so much. And now the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, very much for this opportunity. And uh, Polycredos, Julia, Teresa, Luciane, Ana Caldeira, Ivan, Ivan, and the other Polish. Um, well, I, I would like to, to share my PowerPoint presentation. This project is part of my postdoctoral research in, in SESH. And I try to explain uh, briefly the, the main points. Uh, of course, this is part of the, the process, it's not conclude a uh, project. The project is it's, it's called, or this presentation is called the, the Vestige of Spanish Colonialists, the Techniques of Sovereign Massacre in Colombia. And this project is part of the, the one of the bigger, <laughs> It's a force of exceptionality in the global south. Um, so the, the project is oriented to the, to the notion of, of global south and how this notion allowed for a diversity of new perspectives in the social science. This project tried to establish then a theoretical dialogue with Agambe Friends. First, to compare how the notion of sovereignty, law, and exception operate in Colombia. This, this idea is basically a Gambe framework can be useful for interpreting the, the massacre in, in Colombia, and especially in a strained relationship with the notion of sovereignty, law, and exception. The central hypothesis regards colonialists and the juridical biopolitical mechanism of the Inquisition influence in the configuration of massacres conducted by paramilitaries in the 90s. Um, I will explain um, um, uh, later this, this notion of, of massacre, what does it mean, massacre and sovereignty. Um, but in advance, I said, uh, due to the territorial control level implementation um, of the legal procedure model, I call this sovereign massacre. Um, in conclusion, in advance, of course, the project reflects on the causes 
and procedure that led to the bare lives of thousands of victims in Colombia. This project tried to contribute to the process of historical memory. Second, the project, this project sets light on how the Colombian massacre are executed from a philosophical perspective, and third, it allowed or permit to establish a comparative study of North-South global concerning of practice of tenant politics. The idea is um, the notion of, of tenant politics is a spring framework and, and try to establish a relationship and difference between global and, and North. How the kind of politics practice operates in in this in this scenario in the global and in the north. Well, the the first idea is in order to to clarify the several notions of like uh, sovereignty. I appeal to a Smith and a Gambian perspective. Um, because as a rule, the people consider that sovereignty is linked to the state or, or government. But in, in these projects, the idea is um, sovereignty depends on the actor's ability to carry out his self-interest. I mean, basically, it's power. is how, in that case, paramilitaries deploy their, their actions against the population. Is, is it will be precisely sovereignty power. It's brutal power. It's a primitive power, I can say. So this idea of sovereignty is linking to the massacre that occurred in Colombia because precisely the, the paramilitaries deploy their action during several days um, Maybe or sometimes uh, even the, the government and, and the states uh, knew this this circumstance, but of course try to to behind their self interest. So, sovereign sovereignty and paramilitary action are really connected in that sense because, in according to Agamben and, and Schmidt theory. Uh, Sovereignty, it's basically brutal power, how the actors um, carry out this interest. So uh, according to the, to the Agambe also in the method, the method uh, that I, I use is genealogy. Because of course, for, for many historians, the connection between inquisition practice or techniques and paramilitars action could be could be very very polemic and, and controversial um, because uh, if we understand the history like a regular line of evolution process, of course it's it's difficult to and debatable to establish this relationship. But the point here is. Genealogy, genealogy is, is uh, basically to connect the, the present in order to understand the past. So also appeal to several practices, several strategies that the actors um, deployed. In that case, specifically, are you talking about paramilitar uh, massacres uh, in Colombia? So also, the genealogy, I think it's, it's useful because in Smith and Agambe, the normativity is not only associated to the state, it's associated to, for instance, regi religions. Even for me, like Smith uh, argue, law is part of a ritual, a ceremony. It's a, it's, I mean, it's another reproduction or replication of religious stage like uh, Schmidt, um, Schmidt's um, propose in, in, several, in several books. So in that case, mm, the paramilitary action not represent the chaos, represent new normativity. Even 
I, I said, uh, because uh, in many cases, uh, government and, and states support this, this kind of action. So in, in, in my research, I, I established um, uh, several characteristics of the sovereign massacre. Uh, first of all, it's a, it's a territorial domain of days or weeks in certain Colombian towns. I mean, uh, paramilitary groups um, attack the population, uh, producing many, many different kind of uh, inhuman treatment, rape, mutilation, even in impalement focus on exposing women bodies. Um, I mean, the first point, crucial point here is, is territorial domain. And the second one is biopolitical techniques that the paramilitary uh, carry out during, during these um, uh, massacres. Uh, I mentioned before, um, but this kind of biopolitical technique, it's also associated uh, to the notion of territory because the bodies, it's also territories for, for paramilitary groups in order to, to, to propose a, a border between, between combatants, between uh, civilians and, and people as a rule. Um, and the third one is the uh, sovereign massacre. It's uh, the imposition of juridical process. I, I said, or I claimed, paramilitars create um, a kind of normativity, kind of juridical process. Obviously, no focus on the government or the state law. It focus on the action and the uh, precisely sovereign in terms of Smith and Agamben, with the brutal for the brutal the brutal power that paramilitars conducted do, conduct during this uh, episode during this um, epoch, um, I registered fifteen cases, identified fifteen cases where paramilitars um, carry out sovereign massacre. Um, I mentioned briefly the, a, a couple case, Salado. Salado is a um, small town in the Caribbean north um, where the people was uh, basically brutal, suffer brutal imposition of the territory, um, uh, murders, um, rape. Uh, um, of course, the, the women's body suffer, especially in, during massacres. Because of course it's uh, really connected with uh, gender violence, and I, I I developed these ideas in in several uh, articles related with the Colombian army conflict. Um, Mapiripan it's a very emblematic case also. Um, the paramilitars, for instance, play soccer with the with the dismember heads during this uh, time, during uh, a couple of uh, one week, approximately. So this, they are, these uh, are implemented cases in order to understand the um, precisely the characteristics of a sovereign massacre. Also, the notion of massacre, it's, it's very ambiguous. Um, as a rule, um, legal scholars prefer to use genocides, but, um, here I I appeal to to massacre it in order to to dialogue with the notion of sovereign and, and in order to go beyond to the notion of 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 uh, scholars or legal scholars associated with human rights in a in the most traditional sense. So also connected with the idea of uh, changes in the in the territory. Um, I propose the exercise of sovereignty leads to the drastic um, uh, change in the massacre territory. Therefore, I appeal to Lefebvre uh, because he explains in a 
very illustrative way the how the people change the the territory in three sense um in an ideal or in the imaginary territory because here the people after massacre um change their environment but also in the in the symbolic way the people that suffer massacre women and survivors um yeah affect or or demonstrate this uh, kind of affect the um suffer like uh, for instance uh, the people remember the the place before and in order to try to um, establish a, a connection with the past but it's it's on it's uh, sometimes it's it's almost impossible because the people the symbolic community changed drastically and the second one the the territory changed the physical territory changed drastically um the third one the the real territory was changed so even for instance in a in a symbolic uh, way like a music changed uh, by means of massacres uh, i have so i have a friend who who said uh, who proposed a musical massacre because sometimes sometimes when paramilitaries carry out their actions um uh, paramilitaries played the guitar or paramilitaries um played uh, popular music here like a vallenato so it affects and it changes drastically the imaginary world again in order to to transform the drastically the the territory by means of uh, this change this change uh, produced by massacred sovereignty so i i also explain in a in a good chapter these uh, categories are dispute scenario territorial control scenario and scenario between combatants because for paramilitary um the body like uh, i said before it's a disputable scenario disputable territory so when paramilitaries um are dispute scenario it means when paramilitaries try take to control the the territory but it's also disputable territory in that case and then the second one it's uh paramilitaries control the territory and therefore try to um, eliminate the difference i mean like a uh, gays queer so on and so forth i mean try to establish a normalization again normativity and normalization it's a crucial point in the sovereignty massacre and also scenario between combatants it means uh again uh, the the women's body is crucial in that sense because it implied for for them like a successive uh campaign against the the combatants especially women try to uh, by means of rape for instance try to try, try to control the the territory it's it's again the the notion of territory here is predominant in in massacre sovereignty so the third one the third characteristic is uh, is the juridical process and, and here i establish a comparison of the inquisition process and the paramilitary massacres um i appeal uh, or to, to several books like um Emireki, Emireki, um, who proposed three categories in the Inquisition process: the, the investigation, denunciation, and confession. Accusation, sorry, accusation, denunciation, and confession. Accusation, it could be initi initiated um, in any circumstance uh, because. Here, 
all we are potentially responsible to the to the crimes to the crimes against uh, the faith against religion. Therefore, um, this tries because this trials was created because not true was out, but they are to endorse the need to punish men by means of the purification of the corrupt body. Here also paramilitaries um, began the process and justified and they, they towns uh, chosen as helpers of the guerrilla has already been found guilty. It's, 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 for me, it's, it's very similar, this kind of um, characteristics, accusation. Accusation is, of course, not, it's not part of the juridical process in the most regular sense, but regardless, it's a, juris a juridical process. Of course, it will be unacceptable today, but, but the point here is in the global south, like Colombia, this kind of process is operate conjointly. I mean, the, the law and exception is part of the same, the same issue. Not only here in the global south, but, but it's all, all, always, it's operate in the north, but in the north operate in a different circumstance. Because for instance, like uh, Professor Professor Baventura de Sousa said in, in several books uh, uh, a couple of decades ago, um, in Colombia, um, the, the state pre proceed to the nation. I mean, first of all, in Colombia, um, the criollo, the elite, the, the local elite group create uh, the state, the Colombia state, but without uh, without nation, without people. Even even now, yeah, the, the idea of Colombian nation is is the vital, is the vital for us. We are we are building this notion. So, um, my my my. Proposal, so it's it's the it's the connection point. It's normative, normativity, and normalization. Again, it's it's uh, appealing to to Schmidt and Agambe perspective. Exception and no and law is part of the same the same predicament. So denunciation in the Spanish Inquisition, anyone any, anyone could be prosecution witness. Um, if the people um, try to to change their mind, try to like in the in the Spanish archives, it's called revocantes. So uh, uh, the witness in, involved being burned at the stake. So in the in the in the case of um, Inquisition, I I investigate this uh, archive in in Madrid during the last the last year. In the last year, I I have this opportunity uh, in order to compare precisely paramilitar action. Paramilitar action, for instance, use the caratapadas. Caratapadas is people who who cover their their face. They they were informants. But of course, this kind of informant was um, used used by unjustified action, right, to legitimize their action, because these individuals who often indiscriminately pointing point out of the victim of the massacre. Sometimes, of most of the time, um, these uh, caratapadas um, didn't know the people, the the local people. It's just it's just a strategy uh, deployed by paramilitaries. Paramilitaries also prepare inter interviews and fill out a list of potential insurgents. But it's part of the game uh, because, like I said before, it's an unjustified process. Precisely, they try to incorporate justified arguments like uh, interviews or a list of potential in, insurgents in order to legitimize 
their actions. And the third one is uh is confession. Confession um is again try to legitimize in, in decision the, the religion domain. But also um I I propose um uh, um, inquisition and paramilitaries try to to distance to take distance from the acts of torture inflict on the convicted person. I think in, uh, the 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 legal process or um, or sovereignty massacre in in Colombia it also obey to the same uh, idea. It's try to to take distance because even for for the paramilitars it's very cruel. Therefore, they appeal, for instance, to use uh, another name because for for them it's it's quite hard to assume that they are perpetrators um, against people against population in, in general. Um, and here, Inquisition operate in the same in the same way. So, the idea of confession is is uh, is uh, produce a, a biopolitical operation in order to save the soul. I mean the the purification achieved by the by by pain. Um, and here, paramilitaries create torture torture schools throughout the country to train their soldiers in pain tactics. It's again the the, the gain of, of of pain, the gain of um, purification of the body, it's it's um, it's present in the in the sovereignty massacre uh, carried out by paramilitars. Um, and here um, I have um, uh, paramilitary sample of a uh, collective confession. Here it's um, it, for me it's it's uh, sometimes very difficult to to read, but here is in in English, no? The center of memorial produce another um, another well in in Spanish, but um, you can see or maybe we can discuss in in Spanish and. In, Portuguese, perhaps this this uh, collective confession, because um, here paramilitars um, select the people and say, well, when they say we are going to ask some question, nosotros vamos a hacer algunas preguntas. Wh whoever speaks, many will be said. Quien hable se, sal se salvará. And if they don't speak, they already know what they are going to do. Y si no hablan, ya saben qué va a pasar. The question was if the guerrilla lived here, if the guerrilla had a, a, a wife here, if the guerrilla danced here, if the cook for the guerrilla here. La pregunta es si la guerrilla vive aquí, Si la guerrilla tiene esposa aquí, again, the, the notion of, of women and um, the bodies of the women is crucial here. Y si la guerrilla baila aquí. Y si la guerrilla cocina aquí. So, for me, it's, it's um, intriguing and very interesting this uh, paramilitar example of collective confession. Um, because it's part of the, or it's, it's a political strategy, it's, again. Um, try to establish um, um, uh, the most um, horrified scenario and try to, to push the people in order to confess. But of course, confess is useless, useless regardless. It's part of the, the dispositive. Again, uh, it's a biopolitical strategies in order to legitimize their actions. So it's uh, basically my my main arguments. Um, 
and I well I I really like uh, to talk with you guys and and yeah thank you so much for this opportunity I hope you you will interest in this in in several ideas that I post.